Hey, how's it going guys, and welcome back to another new and upcoming Monster Taming Games list, this time featuring the PlayStation and Xbox. That said, if you are looking for a Nintendo Switch or PS Vita, I have three videos for you guys to check out as we have covered those topics in the past. Today's video is going to incorporate the PS4, the Xbox One, and the PS5 as well as the Xbox Series X. The reason for this overlap between the generations as well as the different companies is because a lot of games that are out for the PS4 are out as well for the Xbox, and same goes for the next generation consoles. So today we're going to be showcasing 10 games and hopefully by the end of this you'll find out about some games that you either didn't know about or maybe want to give a try. Now I will say that if you did watch the Nintendo Switch video there will be a lot of commonality between that video and this one. I do have a sister video to this one planned going over another 10 titles so definitely stay tuned for that as well. So yeah that being said make sure to sit back relax and let's dive right in. Okay, so the first game we're going to be talking about on this list is Chain Monsters, a monster taming MMORPG that features turn-based combat, a 2D and 3D hybrid art style, a breeding system, Nuzlocke mode, various dungeons to explore, and most interestingly, blockchain integration. Now, it's no secret that I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to NFTs, blockchain, or crypto in general, though I have made an effort to learn more about crypto for investment sake, but basically the monsters in game that you receive will have an inherent value that can be traded much like cryptocurrency for real money. So much like a currency such as VeChain, Ethereum, or Bitcoin that contains a certain real world value per coin, the chain monsters will as well. Shinies, event only legendaries, and more will truly hold a value beyond the scope of even the game's life cycle. It's definitely an interesting concept and it's no wonder why they killed it on Kickstarter with the game having its own investment potential. Digimon Survive is one of those games that unfortunately we don't know much about, however the outcry from fans for any inkling of what's going on behind the scenes is vast. From what we know, Digimon Survive is going to be a tactical RPG in which you play as a human who has found themselves trapped within the digital world and must tame and battle alongside various Digimon in order to survive in a harsh environment. Seemingly due to the pandemic, the game has been the victim of various delays and as of right now does not have an official launch date outside of 2021. I'd even take this as a grain of salt because given the lack of information, I wouldn't be surprised at this point if we ended up getting it next year. I've got to say though, I am really excited about this one even if tactical RPGs aren't necessarily my strong suit. Perhaps you wanted a game with a more lighthearted atmosphere, focusing on day-to-day -day elements such as farming, monster raising, fishing, player and home customization, relationships, crossbreeding, and even some battles as well. If any of these features do sound interesting to you, then perhaps Opa Magica might just be your fix. This game has you live out your days working on the farm, getting romantically involved with other characters, exploring the blob realms, which are these randomly generated dungeons in which you can find blob eggs for your team. The blobs act as this game's monsters, which can be crossbred or even fused together for maximum battle efficiency. The game's Kickstarter recently concluded, and the game had smashed every single stretch goal in its wake, which I believe is a true sentiment to the outstanding work of the developer, the marketing of the publishing team, and the interest from the audience. This is also one of those games that's coming to every major platform, so that's definitely exciting too. If you're looking for something a little more similar to Pokemon in terms of mechanics and world building, look no further than Nexomon Extinction, a game that, while inspired by Pokemon, turns the formula on its head by incorporating a much greater focus on the game's narrative, whether it be the story-driven campaign, which is one of the best I've seen in the genre, its interesting lore that challenges the friendship dynamic that we generally see in games like Pokemon, its extremely memorable cast, which consists of a wide range of individuals, whether they pertain to the story in a more support role or are major players to it, or even its commitment to replayability by introducing a custom mode that allows a player to truly cater each playthrough to one's own specifications to maximize the enjoyability and longevity of the game. This is one of those games that I can't recommend enough to both newcomers and veterans of the genre as I believe wholeheartedly that anybody that plays this game will have a fun time doing so. Now perhaps you're looking for something more complex, more strategic, and with a seemingly endless amount of content. If that's the case, then Serlum Ultimate is likely the game for you. Now I can't emphasize how much there is to do in this game, and if you're someone that enjoys endless grinding, you'll feel right at home with this one. This is a game where the story takes a back seat and the gameplay takes the forefront, boasting a seemingly infinite number of achievements to unlock, two dozen classes to experiment with, over a thousand monsters to summon, tame, and fuse, 
customizable held items in the form of artifacts, spell gems allowing your monsters to learn any attack that corresponds with their typing, nether stones which will give you the extra edge in battle, randomly generated dungeons to explore with an infinite amount of depths, no level caps, scaling enemy monsters, side quests featuring various gods within the game, false gods to defeat in battle, and much, 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 much more. I've put around 80 hours into this game and I wanted to review it once Early Access came out, but I felt like the 80 hours I had put into it was not enough to truly give the game the spotlight it deserves. You can spend a lot of time just starting new games on different files, experimenting with how different classes work, and it is a true sentiment to how rich this game is in terms of content. Next up we got Eternal Exodus, a demon taming RPG that is heavily inspired by the Shin Megami Tensei series. In this world you wake up in what appears to be some sort of version of hell or perhaps purgatory and through commanding and fusing various demons, it's a player's job to make sense of it all. In terms of combat, as you can see the game clearly boasts that SMT format with the dev being proud to call this game the indie Shin Megami Tensei. The game is boasting a pixel art style that I personally really like and will be having its Kickstarter campaign on June 1st, so you guys can definitely wishlist the game if that does interest you to show your support. Now speaking of the SMT franchise, in late May, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster is coming to PS4 and if you haven't played the original, it pits you, the Demi Fiend, aka half demon, half man, in a world on the brink of destruction and you must fight alongside various demons you've recruited in order to pave the future. The game features multiple endings in which you'll be able to sort of align yourself with various characters and from what I've been told is a very difficult and unforgiving JRPG with some even calling it the hardest game they've ever played. Now I can't personally attest to this as I, as well as many others, are going to take their first dive into the Shin Megami Tensei series with this game. But veterans, please do leave your experiences in the comments below. I haven't played much Shin Megami Tensei outside of experimentation with some of the older games. Next on the list we have Monster Harvest, a self-proclaimed monster taming and farming action RPG that will set the player out on an adventure of a lifetime. The game takes inspiration from Pokemon and Stardew Valley and as of such it has features such as farming, battling, and a story narrative. Interestingly, the game's monsters are actually these mutations from crops that you grow, making them feel more unique in their own right. You can also customize your house, craft furniture, and other goods to fill your house with, and it has a weather system that'll affect the way you go about running your farm. The game also does boast some type of turn-based battle, so that's definitely exciting as well. As of the time of recording this video, the game has been delayed until July, but in the future that could change. This is the third delay. Those of you who have been following my channel for quite some time will know that I have very high opinions of Monster Sanctuary. This is a game that combines the Metroidvania genre with a 3v3 turn-based battle system that functions off of a unique combo system and overall just provides a very different yet extraordinarily enjoyable monster taming experience. Within this game you must hatch and battle with various monsters utilizing an array of upgradable weapons and skill options to uncover the truth behind the old world and what the alchemists are trying to achieve by destroying the monster sanctuary. The monsters don't learn attacks through typical level ups and instead skills via a skill tree system. And honestly, it's just another one of those must plays for any fan of the genre. Now finally, last for today's video and certainly not least, we have Sky Climber a monster taming city building procedurally generated open world sandbox that much like Ova Magica destroyed its Kickstarter campaign with ease. This game challenges what I and many others thought were the limitations of the genre. The game's gonna feature hundreds of monsters all working in real time combat alongside several classes, multiple dynasties that the player can interact with, an engaging story, an RTS mode for large-scale battle control, large co-op servers, and of course the ability to build large-scale kingdoms. This game prides itself on player choice, allowing the player to truly choose what they want to spend their time doing. Don't like city building? Well, you don't have to. You can become a nomadic monster tamer. Don't like monster taming? Well, you can go build cities. You're not pigeonholed into one specific avenue of play, and I do think that aspect of the game has had a lot to do with its success. So there you have it guys, 10 monster taming games available for PlayStation consoles and Xbox consoles. I think as time moves on, we will start to see more games that are exclusive to the next gen, but as of right now, we don't really have that, with the exception of one game that we'll be mentioning in the next video. On that note, was there a game that wasn't mentioned here that you feel like 
perhaps should have been mentioned or would like to see it mentioned in the next video. There's definitely some games I have in mind that I do have planned for the next video, but I'd like to see some of your guys' thoughts because like we saw with the Switch video, we actually came together and made an extra video with even more games, some of which I never even knew about. That to me is just another example of how this channel sort of has been built, not just by me, but the community. Anyways, with all that being said, if you do enjoy monster taming content, definitely subscribe to this channel. We cover monster taming games and games with monster taming elements exclusively on this channel so if that is something you're interested definitely subscribe you can also follow me on twitter at gym leader ed and check out our monster taming discord i'll see you guys in the next one peace